This is Joe Forward, legal writer for the State Bar of Wisconsin. And I'm here once again with Judge Randy Koshnick. He's the director of Wisconsin State Courts. And we wanted to give members another update on what's happening with the Wisconsin court system um, and specifically a recent order that came down from the Wisconsin Supreme Court about court operation plans. Judge Koshnick, how are you? Welcome. Fine, Joe. I'm fine, thanks. Nice to see you again. You too, you too. So Judge Koshnick, um, I know I've talked to you. I talked to you in March. I think we talked again in June um, about uh, just the progression of what's going on during COVID-19 and with the court system. Um, a, a new order came down from the Wisconsin Supreme Court um, just recently, about a couple of weeks ago. Can you give us an overview of, uh, of that order and how it affects uh, operation plans for, for the circuit courts? Sure, I'd be, I'd be happy to. So brief overview, back in March and April, the state Supreme Court issued orders suspending in-person proceedings as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, primarily to uh, protect the public and not require people to come to court in a situation where they might be exposed to the coronavirus. Uh, but the Supreme Court also, you know, has a priority of keeping the courts running. And so we're doing a balancing act. We want to meet the courts, keep them operational, keep them running to do the people's business, uh, but also make them accessible to the public and the media, uh, but not expose people who are involved with the court system to an unreasonable risk of exposure. And so in May and April, the state Supreme Court issued orders uh, suspending most in-person proceedings, including jury trials. Um, and then in May, May 22nd, the Supreme Court of Wisconsin issued an order allowing county circuit courts and municipal courts for that matter to resume some in-person uh, in proceedings, including jury trials, uh, once the circuit court or municipal court had an operational safety plan, which was approved by the appropriate chief judge of that respective district. So shortly after May 22nd, various circuit courts and municipal courts around Wisconsin put together uh, what we call uh, planning committees, and that would involve the judge and, and the district attorney for the county or the prosecutor or the and a defense lawyer, member of the private bar, sheriff's office, county administrator, member of the public, you know, a variety of people who are infected, who are affected by the court system. And they would come up with a plan that would work for their particular county or municipal uh, court. It typically involving things like distancing measures, uh, sanitizing, you know, opportunities, equipment, um, masks. The Supreme Court did require masks to be worn by everybody in an in-person proceeding in any court in Wisconsin. And so once the plan was approved by the chief judge, then that particular court was allowed to resume in-person proceedings. The Supreme Court order from May 22nd still encouraged use of remote technology whenever feasible. So Zoom and other video conferencing or maybe telephone appearances were encouraged, were feasible, but some things have to be done uh, in person. For example, a jury trial would ordinarily need to be done in, in person where you're all in the same room. Uh, and so that was operating pretty well. Pretty much every court in the state had an operational plan approved by the chief judge by, uh, you know, September, late September, early October. So we all were hopeful. I think we're heading back towards what you might call normal or pre-COVID operations. Uh, but then what happened in uh, late September is we had some spikes, particularly in the Fox Valley, where there was a, a higher infection rate, a higher hospitalization rate, and uh, judges in a couple of those counties in the Fox Valley uh, determined that it might be appropriate to, to scale back the in-person proceedings a little bit, at least for a week or 10 days until we could see how serious this uh, spike was going to be. There were also practical problems. We were having a hard time staffing the, the courtrooms because the clerk of court's office or the DA's office or public defender's office or the judge's office, you know, if you had a person who was infected, you had to have a large group quarantine themselves to make sure that they also didn't get infected and go back and spread the coronavirus further. So we, we had a problem actually staffing the, the courtrooms. A number of things uh, led to, to a, a desire to have uh, maybe take a step back in appropriate circumstances. And I should add, when you're quarantining, you can still appear in court. If you're home quarantining, like we're on Zoom right now, Joe, the clerk of court can quarantine and clerk a hearing and the judge can preside virtually, even if he or she is quarantining. Uh, but the previous Supreme Court orders did not explicitly give chief judges authority to step back. The May 22nd order said to the chief judge, when you approve this order, that court in that circuit or that municipal court is allowed to resume 
in-person proceedings with these safeguards in place. And so I think what the Supreme Court was, was trying to accomplish in their October 1st order, which is the one you referred to from a couple of weeks ago, they were saying uh, explicitly, chief judges do have authority in appropriate circumstances to step back on the, on the in-person uh, proceedings as, as circumstances uh, may require. Okay. And so moving forward for attorneys who are looking for information, they should, should be looking at their, the circuit court operational plans. And then moving forward, if there, if, if there is a spike or increased cases or something in a specific county, the, the chief judge will have authority then to, to amend the operational plan and potentially um, halt temporarily in-person proceedings if, that, if that's what they think is required uh, moving forward. That's right. And, and that's a good point. So we post all the orders of this type on wicourts.gov. We have a special COVID-19 tab on that website and you can look there and they're listed by county and by district, the operational plans. You can see if there are any special requirements for your particular uh, court. And if a lawyer is wondering whether a, a certain county is gonna be resuming jury trials in the near future, they can check that website or they could contact the um, presiding judge for that particular county. The presiding judges usually are administrative heads for the individual circuit court. They report to the chief judge who's typically over a multi-county district. The presiding judge puts together the steering committee and we want to have involvement from members of the public, including the private bar and, and public sector lawyers. So we're, we're interested in input from everybody who has to deal with the, with the pandemic in, in, the, in the court system. That's right. And we're trying to do things as best as we reasonably can, taking into consideration everybody's needs and preferences and their safety. And so things do evolve as we've all learned pretty pretty quickly. So we're trying to remain flexible, uh, but also keep the courts running as efficiently as possible. Right. And, and you mentioned the, the website. I did notice that there's a, that the, 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 the uh, Why Courts website is new. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, CCAP is just a, an awesome, you know, office within the director of state courts office. We've got some great people running CCAP. Jean Bosquet is the chief information officer. She's, she's in charge of, of CCAP under my direction. And we're always trying to make it more user friendly and, and useful to people. We don't want it to be some website that's hard to navigate or full of legalese where a non-lawyer would have a difficult time figuring out what the situation is with the court. So we're, we're trying to make it visually um, you know, appealing, uh, easy to access the important information that you need. We're updating it every day as information comes out. So what do you think, Joe? Is it an improvement? Do you like the new format, new layout? I really like it. I think it's easy to navigate. Um, everything's uh, user-friendly and I, I really do like it. Yeah, it's nice. Good. They let me pilot it before they release it because they figure if I can figure it out, anybody can figure it out. Right. <laughs> Well, uh, unless there's anything else you wanted to add, uh, Judge Koshnick, I appreciate the update. I know members are always interested in the updates and uh, keeping, on ta keeping tabs on what's going on with, this, with the ongoing situation here. So I uh, really appreciate the time again, and uh, we'll catch up with you again soon. All right. Thanks, Joe. And I appreciate the bar keeping in touch with us and spreading the news to the members of the bar and the public. And so you serve a very viable function by doing that. And I appreciate the opportunity to meet with you whenever you'd like. And I appreciate you helping me spread the word. Great. Thanks a lot, Judge. Thank you.